Coming up next on Softball 316, get ready for the USA Softball J.O. Cup as some of the nation's best 16 and under ladies compete. There's more than a trophy on the line as the coaching staff from Team USA looks on. Go inside the USA Softball Stadium Power Tour as the world's greatest softball home run hitters are mic'd up. Discover how important the money ball is. It's worth two points and could be the tiebreaker. Welcome to the world of the McQuaid's Tournament, the largest softball tournament in the world. Meet one of the faces in the crowd at the McQuaid's, whose day job is serving as the president of the Minnesota Twins. And get ready for Border Battle 9. It's the annual showdown between Team USA and Team Canada, which will feature for the first time a women's slow pitch national team. All this and more on this episode of Softball 360, presented by USA Softball. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Softball 360. We're here to see the best of the best compete on the center stage. everyone, welcome to Softball 360 presented by USA Softball. I'm your host, Jenny Finch, and I'm here to bring you all things softball. Let's dive right into it. We're heading out to the USA Softball J.O. Cup. It's one of the top youth events in the nation this summer. The USA Softball Junior Olympic Cup, a gathering of the best young softball players in the nation. USA Softball J.O. Cup is a 64-team invitational tournament that features some of the best 16-under and 18-under teams in the nation. I feel like our team gets along really well. We have a lot of chemistry on the field. Many of these ladies are headed to a major college softball program down the road, and it's easy to see why. <laughs> The competitions there, the, the, the competitiveness, just the high level of softball at this event. The competition's amazing. One of the best, honestly. There's a lot of really good teams here. Created in 2015, the USA Softball J.O. Cup is a one-of-a-kind youth fast-pitch tournament which awards more than trophies. Each year, the top finishing teams in each division are receiving a cash donation back to their participating 501c3 programs. Uh, when we have a giant tournament like this, all our department comes together. Every unit that makes up our department, we have about 160 full-time and 400 part-time and uh, we pretty much shut everything down and come and focus on this tournament. And we start planning for this tournament back in January to make sure that we cover all of our bases and make sure everything's covered. Because the most important thing is that, is that the girls have a good time and a good experience and want to come back in the future. Four, right, zone come on, in, come on, zone now. in and drive the ball. Here we go. Get them back on three, ready, one, two, three. Get them back. Go on three, one, two, three, go. go. Here we go. Participation yes. is by invite only. And invitations are sent out based on prominent ranking systems. You know, everybody's just always like supporting each other and great to have such a supportive uh, support system, especially with this kind of competition, just keep everybody calm, so. In addition to competing for the prize pool, Participating teams also have the opportunity to compete in front of members of the National Team Selection Committee and coaching staff. With softball returning to the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, these athletes could potentially be representing the USA on the world's highest stage. This year, the USA Softball J.O. Cup heads west to Lake Elsinore and Paris, California, July 24th through 29th. For more info, please log on to usasoftball.com. 
Wow, what a unique and special opportunity to compete against the best of the best and showcase their skills to the coaches of Team USA. One of my most treasured moments was heading out to USA Softball Camp and being around these events because you truly are around the best of the best and you're soaking it up not only from player to player, but from player to coaches as well. By day, he's the president of the Minnesota Twins. But on weekends, Dave St. Peter is still a softballer. Take along with St. Pete as his team tackles the world's largest softball tournament. It's a game where pride does matter. Team USA versus Team Canada will preview Border Battle 9. But first, take a look at the upcoming USA Softball Stadium Power Tour schedule. The world's greatest softball home run hitters take aim at Target Field, home of the Minnesota Twins. Then it's off to sunny Las Vegas, where the Bombers will be joined by special guest Jose Canseco, who will attempt to hit the longest home run ever. The Sluggers will also hit at the home of the Tampa Bay Rays, St. Louis Cardinals, and the Houston Astros this season, with the top five qualifying for the finals September 15th in Miami, home of the Marlins. Softball 360, presented by USA Softball, is brought to you by Easton Sports. There is a difference, and the difference is Easton. By Monsta, the highest performance softball bats on the planet. And by Worth Sports, elevate your level of play with innovative high performance equipment. Who is the world's greatest softball home run hitter? The USA Softball Stadium Power Tour provides that definitive answer. And usually it comes down to that last pitch. Known as the money ball, it's worth two points and could be the tiebreaker. Attaboy! How important is the money ball? It all comes down to 15 pitches. What's on the line? The chance for home run glory. For close to 20 years, the USA Softball Stadium Power Tour has been in place to prove who is the greatest softball home run hitter in the land. From coast to coast all summer long, the Sluggers go one-on-one -on -one in a home run derby at major and minor league ballparks. So when you're stepping into the box, you kind of take it all in, you look around, but then um, you got to get focused. You got to get ready for the first pitch. I mean, you got to get locked in because you only get 15 pitches, so you got to make them all count. And uh, when, uh, when that first pitch is pitched, you definitely settle in. You, uh, the nerves calm down, and it's just you and the pitcher. And when it comes down to it, and you kind of got to focus out all the people that are in the crowd and all the noise that they're making, and you just got to go to town, go to work. Everybody's out there watching you, you know, and and you have to put on a show. So um, you, you can't go out there and disappoint. Each home run is worth one point, except the last pitch, known as the money ball. It's worth two points and could be the tiebreaker. The majority of us making the finals is one or two home runs. You know, you, you miss four money balls, might knock you right out of the running no matter what you do. So, yeah, it's huge. You go from a seven or a nine in the last swing or a, a nine to 11 in the last swing, you don't think about it at the time, but it is, it's huge, especially when you get to the, the tally at the end of the year. This year, the Dudley Money Ball is painted gold further signifying the importance of the almighty money ball. What does a 500 foot home run sound like? The Sluggers are mic'd up for an insider's look at the power tool. Ooh! Atta boy! That's gone. Ah, it's a bad time to suck today. That's killed. Oh, oh. oh. oh for deck, man. Whoa. He's locking in now. That is murdered. Atta boy. There you go. Look at that. Stay smooth. 
At the 2016 USA Softball Stadium Power Tour Finals in Miami, the money ball proved to be the deciding factor in Team Mikan's championship. Watch as Kevin Flip Philby, the last man standing, goes deep into the yard to earn the championship. With so much on the line, it's easy to see why the money ball is make or break for the long haul bombs. One thing's for sure, the fans in the stands are in for a show at the USA Softball Stadium Power Tour. Who will make the finals in September? Be sure to follow along all season at softball360.com. Being known as the world's largest will get you plenty of attention. When we return, we're headed to North Dakota as we preview one of the world's largest softball tournaments. So massive, it goes by simply one word, McQuaid's. But first, time for today's softball secret with your host, Jenny Finch. Good, strong, and balanced. And Cobb is the tip of the triangle. Moving towards home plate, may have a firm, solid break. Hitting is probably one of the hardest things to do in all of sports. So many times I'm at youth softball fields and I see hitters step in that batter's box and there's so much movement. We already have a moving ball, a moving round object and a bat trying to hit that round ball. My advice to young hitters would be keep your head still. Keep your eyes still. The last thing we need is more moving objects in the picture. Hitting is hard enough. Stay still, keep it simple, Hands to the ball, keep it short. Good luck, hitters. Being known as the world's largest will always garner plenty of attention. Our next story, let's take a look at the McQuaids, the world's largest nonprofit slow pitch softball tournament. For close to a half century, the last weekend in June means one thing in Bismarck, North Dakota, McQuaid's. It is really hard to, de to describe this experience until you come and actually experience it. And once people come here, they fall in love with it. Thousands flock to the world's largest softball tournament, which is run completely by volunteers and staged for charity, with 100% of the proceeds going back to the community. So all the umpires that you see here this weekend are donating their game fees. Uh, the proceeds that come in from the uh, entry fees and stuff, they go right to the, all the McQuaid charity. Uh, it's just a great event. Despite the massive size, the McQuaids is a well-organized tournament that still has a small town feel. While the softball is serious, so are the fun and games, as many McQuaid's traditions continue as fans bring coolers of all shapes, sizes, and speed. While the competition is strong, the McQuaid's is also known for bringing teams, towns, and families together. Meet the team of Orser, Olson, and St. Peter, which was formed in 1985 and is made up of standout athletes from Bismarck, Century, and St. Mary's High. After high school, the team went about the business of life. But 20 years later, they are back at the McQuaid's to play in the men's Masters 35 plus division. One player who kept his sports dreams alive is right fielder Dave St. Peter, or St. Pete as he is often referred to. He is a Bismarck native who grew up on a ball diamond. Today, St. Pete is president of the Minnesota Twins, but at the McQuaid's, his focus is softball. Well, you know, like a lot of people, I, you know, played baseball and uh, ultimately, uh, when that career ended, uh, found my, myself on a softball team and ultimately with, uh, with some of my best friends. And this year is all about a reunion, so to speak, of that team and coming together with a lot of good buddies, a chance to laugh and get caught up and hopefully uh, uh, win some softball games. For Dave, coming home means playing softball. We've got about 20 guys who played at one point or another over a three to seven year stretch. And uh, at the end of the day, a lot of these guys haven't seen each other for 10, 15 years. So it's a special weekend. And yes, it's about softball, but it's more about friendship. While St. Pete's team did not win a championship this weekend, they are winners on a much grander scale. With lifelong friendships and a love of the game, there's so much more to playing the game than a trophy. We were friends before softball. We're going to be friends after softball. But softball was certainly a conduit toward uh, giving each other a lot of trouble, trying to work together as a team and have a lot of fun. 
it's an honor to be back here this weekend partaking in it. It's raised a lot of money for charity. It's brought a lot of people together from all, really all over the region. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the world's largest and there's a reason for that. It's also probably the world's best run. They do a great job with this event. Just one small story at the world's largest tournament, McGuire's. The McQuaid's is something that softball teams look forward to each and every year. And the fans have a blast as well. Stay tuned for more on Softball 360. USA versus Canada. What lies ahead at the border bat when Softball 360 returns? The annual showdown between the two national teams continues from Oklahoma City. Softball 360 presented by USA Softball is brought to you by Mike in Sports, elite equipment for the elite player. Dudley, the official softball of this stadium power tour. And by employee owned long haul trucking. We're looking for quality drivers. Log on to longhaultrucking.com. It's time to preview our highly anticipated border battle as we take on our rivals up north, USA versus Canada. And this is the first year that USA Softball will feature a women's national slow pitch team. You don't want to miss this, USA versus Canada. It's always been an annual softball matchup. We're talking about the border battle. This three-day event pits the best slow pitch players in the United States against Canada. Clearly, there are two softball powerhouses with plenty of pop, power, and pride. When members of Team USA play for the Stars and Stripes, the head and the heart begin to stir. One, two, three, USA! Being on Team USA is something that's, you know, it's really special for several reasons. I mean, it's one of those things where you get to play with USA, obviously, on your chest, but also it's being recognized by your peers as one of the top players in the country, and it just sends a shiver down your back. So for it to actually come true is, it's pretty crazy. It makes you think all the people that helped you get there. You have to represent, you know, your country and, and where you come from, and, you know, you, you have to carry yourself in, in a more professional, you know, professional way. Home of USA Softball, the USA Softball Hall of Fame Complex is the site of the border battle. If defense wins games, then Team USA is in great shape. Check out the action in the hot corner. Bubba Brungard is holding court at third base with these defensive gems. On this day, Team USA faces a formidable foe, the always tough Canadian national team. How good are the Canadians? Check out the rifle arm from left field. Blink and you might miss the call. And power? This event features plenty of it as teams send many softballs out of the ballpark. A key ingredient that makes the border battle special, the field. The USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium, OGE Energy Field is simply the finest softball facility on the planet. A shrine to softball and every player's dream to play on. The playing conditions are as close to perfect as you can get. It's the result of a grounds group that takes pride in providing a world-class facility. Most people who come to my field when they walk up on it for the first time at the top of the stadium, they're going to look at the grass. And they say, man, what tremendous grass this is and how beautiful it is. For me, I'll look at the dirt first because of nine people, you got six people playing on dirt. And you put, a, you put three umpires on it, now you got nine. You put a batter on it, you got 10. You load it up with three runners, now you got 13 playing on dirt, but you only got three on grass. So the dirt is very important. We spend a lot of time, probably three times more on dirt than we do on grass, but it's gonna be the grass that catches everybody's eye. Team USA shows what makes them one of the greatest teams in the world. When the red dust of Oklahoma settles, Team USA breathes to a 27-9 victory and bragging rights. Can the Stars and Stripes defend the title again this year? 
Find out at Border Battle 9, which is scheduled for June 30th through July 2nd at USA Softball Complex. For tickets and details, log on to usasoftball.com. Who else is excited to watch the first ever USA Softball Women's National Slow Pitch Team? This summer, will US be able to keep its border battle title, or will this be the year for Canada? Stay tuned this July in Oklahoma City, and we will find out. That's all the time we have for today, but as always, dream and believe. Next week on Softball 360, the world's greatest softball home run hitters take aim at Target Field, home of the Minnesota Twins, for round two of the USA Softball Stadium Power Tour. Get to know the men of USA Softball men's fast pitch national team. And it's softball time in Oklahoma as we take a look back at a record-setting NCAA Women's College World Series. Join us next week on Softball 360, presented by USA Softball.